This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. Welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations 2, everybody. Man, what an episode last time of Shelly D. Killer held up uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! in a neck brace hostage. <laughs> and it's like, I want Edgeworth to investigate the plane. Which is pretty weird. <laughs> so maybe people are going to be like, oh, Edgeworth is in cahoots with, with Shelly the, Killer. With Shelly D. Killer, and Anyhow. he's going to murder everybody. And by the way, the reason I do these recaps isn't for the audience's sake. It's for Marty's sake, because we often... Because I forget a lot. We, we, it could we literally record... be like one day after, and you're like, I forget literally I forget everything, everything that happened that in happened. the Ace Attorney series. I'm, I'm a busy girl with a busy life. I All have right. a lot going oh, on. Oh, oh, turnabout target. End. There's no middle. There's so, no middle. So, so we're, we're at the halfway point. Cool. We are at the halfway point. Because why would the first case be that long? The death of the bodyguard, Ethan Rook, and the arrival of Shelley DeKiller. Yeah, okay. A new development in this case has come to light. Under Knightley's direction, the door of the president's plane was opened. After the paramedics attending Mr. Rook left, we set foot inside the plane, one by one. Whoa, this is some plane! It doesn't have an elevator in it like the last plane we were in. This but... is like the plane from, um, Iron Man. I'm just gonna try, I'm gonna try and, uh, describe it for Artie because he's never seen Iron Man before. I don't watch um, Marvel movies. You don't watch Marvel <laughs> movies. I'm now watching them just now. Um, the plane's super wide and it's basically just, like, two guys, they're chilling in those, like, seats there. And then there's a lot of people, like, partying. Also, why is Nicole Swift on the plane? She's like, I gotta get my report. <laughs> she, she's just a normal bystander. Oh, March, man. March 25th, 4, 4, 15 p.m. President's Plane Office. I mean, why is K on the plane? Oh, my. Where would the president be? Who knows? He's underneath the floor. It seems he's just behind that door. Still a coward, I see. No, there's gotta be a trap door in there. You see how there's, like, a lining around the carpet? <laughs> this is your captain speaking. Please go to the bombing area for a birthday cake. Yes! <laughs> Basically. <laughs> you think he'd just show himself in front of a hitman? Ha 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 ha! Not a chance. Didn't I tell you already? My purpose here is simply to investigate the case. Well then, Mr. Prosecutor, we await your examination of the body. Uh, right. Uh -huh. For now, I have no choice but to obey and continue the investigation. The rest is up to Detective Gumshoe. I'm counting on you! Do, 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 do. The attempted assassination of the president became the murder of a bodyguard. <laughs> it looks like you could use some help, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, I don't deny it, but... See, exactly! If that's the case, then it can't be helped! Just leave it to the great thief K. Faraday! Right. So are you saying you can solve this case? Nope. Said with such certainty. Instead, I'll stick to being your support. Right, let's get straight to the investigation. How about we use Little Thief to recreate the investigation? For what? It's basically just gonna be the same. But we need to know what- oh yeah. I guess we need to true. buy time for the police to prepare. I'll need to draw out this investigation for as long as I can. Let's President's plane! Let's investigate. Let's investigate the weird so uh, masks on the table. The gas masks? Two gas masks lay on the table, ready to protect against poison gas attacks. The president seems to be quite fearful of assassinations. Oh boy! So this is the rumored gas mask. It's my first time seeing the real thing! Gas masks are cool. They're kinda cool. Rumored among the great thieves. No, the Jamma Ninja! The children's program! During Princess Viola's wedding ceremony, the poison-tongued ninja Simon... Simon Cowell? Simon Cowell! <laughs> Who's that? He's the really harsh judge who was originally on American Idol. That was terrible. Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> Muffy, this quiche is totally off. <laughs> I haven't seen that, Artie! Oh. <laughs> Just put that scene in. I have to say, Muffy, that bite of quiche was a complete waste of taste buds and saliva. Maybe, <laughs> I'll think just, about just it. Just put the seed in with the quiche. <laughs> <laughs> I should stop listening to her so seriously. It never seems to pay off. Yeah, what's up? See, she, she says, says yeah! <laughs> that's the translation team. Because <laughs> they knew, deep down, that that's how Marty was going to do it. So there were actually two people who dressed up as the assassin in the Red Hood. 
No, it's too early to say for sure at the moment. But there's Mr. DeKiller, who's a professional assassin. And then there's Nicole, who aimed the laser pointer at the president. Ugh, this is making my head spin. The reason we cannot see the truth is because something is obstructing it. I get it! If we stole that something, then we'd also be stealing the truth. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's one way to look at it. Actually, I've been studying up on investigation techniques. Oh, that sounds promising. First, examine the evidence and information this, that we've you already stole. gotten the to we've already Present gotten the tutorial. The stolen evidence, connect the stolen information, and new truth will appear for you to steal. How was that? I worked really hard at it. Hmm, you get points for effort, I guess. Love the investigation. I can't believe a real professional assassin asked us to investigate this case for him. I couldn't agree more. Just what is he thinking? In any case, let's continue the investigation. Let's do this for Mr. Rook's sake as well. Yeah, Lego man. Lego, Lego my man, Lego. man, man, a Lego man, man, man. Well, let's talk to Nicole. It's an inflatable lifeboat with an oar sitting on top. Looks like it's ready to be used at any time. Hey, there's only one oar. Maybe this president's just like, I saw the Kennedy assassination live. I don't want to go for that myself. <laughs> Get everything. Maybe he's Prepare just. For every maybe, the, maybe his plane has a built-in prayer closet, <laughs> and he's just like, please, please. I'm be a nice there. guy, God. Please don't let. This I don't happen. know why the first thing I said was, please be there. Please, please be, be there. there. Wow. <laughs> that's, not, that's not even. Donkey Kong banana <laughs> slam. Up. Well, I guess you could try to paddle with your hands. Let's talk to Nicole. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm going to examine the thing behind her. It's an assortment of protective gear, from bulletproof vests to hazmat suits. Wow! There's even a space suit! <laughs> Is the president going into outer space? <laughs> if someone hijacks the plane, and they do that thing from Incredibles 2 with Elastigirl, where they just go straight up. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, well, that was Incredibles 1, though, right? That was not Incredibles 1, that was Incredibles 2. Oh, with the jet at the end, yeah. yeah. Once you lose your oxygen, everything starts to be a little fun. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I was mistaking that with the actual rocket from Incredibles no, 1. No, that's the rocket, but no, they no one was on that rocket. Pup -pup didn't need no space suit. He's a car! <laughs> Pep didn't need no space suit. He had the helmet, though. That's all it takes? <laughs> that's all it takes. Why would you need a space suit? The president seems to be very protective of himself. But, what happens if he gets shot and then gets exposed to poison gas? And then on top of all of that, he gets ejected into space! He would probably wear everything that you see here. That would be a sight to see. Alright, fine. I love we'll how talk to Nicole. in the midst of all of this... Oh, jeez. Oh. I love how in the midst of all of this, there's also just a guy being held by the knife, like... It was so... No one really cares about Yu-Gi-Oh! in a neck no. brace, though. Oh, I forgot about the really sad music. It ain't me. I'm just a journalist. All I wanted was a scoop. I'd never kill nobody. Well, you still haven't told us why you concealed the parka from us. This is when I wish we had the Magatama, so it'd just be like, Pew! Five Cyclops. <laughs> we don't well, need that. We got logic chess. <laughs> well, well that, that's because I thought y'all would get suspicious. Was that really the only reason? You gotta believe me, Mr. Prosecutor. I didn't do nothing. I won't tell you not to worry, but there's still no need to be overly frightened. If you truly are innocent, I swear I will prove it. Yeah! My mentor does believe in me! For the last time, Miss Swift, I am not your mentor. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Mr. Prosecutor, you will always be my second mentor. I like the voice you're giving her now, okay. this is good. That's not quite what I meant. She sounds too old though when I do that. I, I just want you to make it slightly different from Lada's. Ugh, That's really good. Yeah, no one good. cares. Everyone's uh, like, she's I Lada. <laughs> the prosecutor presents his shiny, pointy badge and asks, How about a nice cold glass of water? I said no such thing. The detective adds, Or would you prefer some grape juice instead, pal? What are you talking about? <sighs> I'm just getting ready for the real deal. My interrogation. Prosecutors don't handle the interrogations. They don't? I, I bet Manfred von Karma totally did. Manfred von Karma interrogates You everyone. did it! Admit it! 
<laughs> he interrogates everybody. He's like the Bowser of prosecutors. <laughs> Don't forget about flip off. <laughs> <laughs> I hate America. This is what I think of your stupid country. <laughs> now he's in the back. Maybe what actually happened is he's in the back. He's like, why did I flip off America? I, oh, well, maybe he's like, I didn't realize middle finger was like a swear word sign in America. Yeah, yeah. Because he's from Zane Fong. Because <laughs> he's from Zane Fong. Like, I think like the American peace sign in like Brazil is like basically the middle finger. I have no idea. Well, because I know because like at Disney World, they're not allowed to just point. No, they have you to have use to their like whole choose hand. your whole hand. Which is interesting. Choose, choose your whole hand. Let me in. I must get into the president. I don't think... Oh, is that the door? I the president was, is just beyond this I door. I thought that was the door to the bathroom. Maybe he's just in <laughs> he's the like, bathroom. I have to take a big... <laughs> never mind. <don't>, no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> this door. I'm getting a sense that it's challenging me. Okay. There's no need to feel challenged by a door. But look at how big it is. All those electronic locks. It's challenging me to unlock it. That's like the door that the Monkey Island cannibals put on the cabin at, like, the what? last part. <laughs> Wait, okay, back up. There's cannibals on Monkey Island? Yeah, in a secret of Monkey Island. I've never... Okay, I played the game for, like, 15 minutes. There's I did a Let's Play of it. Yeah, I didn't watch it. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, eventually you go to Monkey Island, there are cannibals, and they, like, kidnap you and, like, put you in a cabin, basically, and, like, lock the door. What? And, like, you can keep escaping and coming back, and they're just like, all right. And then they make the locks more and more intricate. And, like, after you do, like, eight times, they have basically a door like that security level, like, electronics and stuff. They're like, that should do it. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down and think it over. What is the purpose of a key? What's the purpose? To unlock treasure? That's right, to unlock treasure. Was that the right answer? No. What's that? The internal and external views of the plane are being monitored by these monitors. Whoa. It's like the, um, it's like the screens in Pajama Sam 2 that are monitoring the weather. The weather. Yeah, that's how, like, security monitors work. I won't rest until I've inspected every nook and cranny. Why is there a bear with a horn on <laughs> it? These monitors show the cockpit and the aircraft's exterior. There doesn't seem to be anything out of place. It looks like it's in the sky, though. These monitors show the cockpit in the aircraft's exterior. There doesn't seem to be anything out of place. Um, okay. That was pretty out of place, I'd say. <laughs> this monitor shows what's happening in this room. <laughs> you can see the little outlines of the people as well. Yeah, that's great. They've got some pretty good tech. Is that so? I don't know much about these types of things. It even captures the fine lines around your eyes, Mr. Edgeworth. Oops, my bad. Those are the usual wrinkles on your forehead. <laughs> Okay, is that all you wanted to say? What about that one? What's this thing? Oh, that's the president's precious stuffed animal. <laughs> okay. I don't really get it, but it's some kind of keepsake. Don't touch it! Precious? That's unexpected. Hey, it kind of looks like there's been a break-in. Indeed. The area it stands on does seem a bit unnatural. Hmm? Are those glass shards underneath the stuffed animal? This unnatural empty space. That's why he was flipping off America. Perhaps. Because <laughs> they broke his someone toy. Broke, someone broke in and took his toy. He's like, this is what I think of your F country. you all. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we think of the Avatar's honor. <laughs> or whatever. Was there another monitor here? Security monitors data jotted down in my organizer. Let's look at the pilot. I, th I think all the other oh, stuff the is just, just the same. The same. Uh... Oh, let's talk to them. I have high hopes for you. Please ensure you do not disappoint me. Understood? How is your investigation progressing? There is no need for concern. It is proceeding smoothly. You remember how much I detest betrayal. All too well. I never see his eyes open. I thought you would. So please don't do anything you'll regret. Ugh. I have no choice but to obey him for now. This is nuts! I'm being used to get an assassin onto the president's plane! If we didn't enter the plane, the investigation would have come to an end. You're not fooling anyone! I know what you're after! I believe I've already said that my only interest is the na nature of Rook's death. But what about the person who hired you to assassinate the president? Perhaps you have forgotten. 
I have no intent to carry out a job I deem futile. Ugh. Very well, let's continue the investigation. Splendid. I have the utmost faith in your abilities, Mr. Prosecutor. Hey, check out my prosecutor's badge. This is the first time I've seen one in person. Is that your license? I myself. Y you mean, there's an actual license to kill? There isn't one, actually. However, if you insist. D don't worry about it. That's one truth I don't need to steal, Mr. DeKiller. Even a great thief's pride is nothing before the presence of a professional killer. Show him that gun, <laughs> The president flipped us off. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I love America. You're a very bad man, Mr. Prosecutor. Uh. If it's about a job request, we can talk about it later. What? What? What's he talking about? About Did guy. you kill the Steel Samurai? Is that gonna solve the case? Unlikely. But keep in mind we're dealing with Prosecutor Edgeworth here. He must have given it a lot of thought. A lot of thought indeed. Y yes of course. I shouldn't provoke him. Just point a gun at him. This has no class. It's lacking in intelligence as well as refinement. Um. Most importantly, it lacks honor. In what world can one consider a murder weapon to be honorable? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I do not share your sentiment. Do you actually believe there is- Yes, of course there is! Don't be rude, Mr. Edgeworth. Apologize to the man. Wh why must I apologize? Kay took a cute selfie of herself. That Unlikely. Matter. That's not very cute at all. Um, what else do we have that we could show him? The raincoat. This single piece of evidence was all it took for you to track me down. I'm impressed. This raincoat was found stuffed under the food stalls. I do not want you to mistake me for the assassin. It seems my worries were unfounded. Since you also single-handedly uncovered the identity of the other red Is hooded figure- Is he still trying to say that he's not the assassin? <laughs> because, like, look at him! I am literally about to kill this guy. <laughs> but I am not the assassin. After that, can you honestly tell me that you still lack faith in your deductive reasoning? DeKeller seems to be telling the truth. Actually, wait, the monitors. Nope. Alright. Bless you. <coughs> okay, let's examine the life preserver. A sturdy life preserver rests against the table. It is an essential life-saving tool. I suppose this is a precaution in case someone accidentally falls into the ocean. The ocean, huh? Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, how about we go together sometime? If you want to go, just go by yourself. Aw, don't be such a party pooper! Let's go visit the ocean! Think about the hot dogs and the shaved ice! It'll be delicious! You just want to go to the ocean to eat. Hey, it's, sometimes it's not safe for a girl to go to the ocean by herself. Edgeworth. It's true, but also Edgeworth isn't her dad. <laughs> and her isn't... dad is in jail! Her dad's dead. Her dad's dead! Sorry. She has other dead. relatives. Her th but is she living with them? No. She's on spring break, and she's like, I'm gonna tail after Edgeworth! <laughs> this, great. It's not spring break. It's been 14 days. I think she's out on her own. Like Maya was out on her own. No, she told us in the last game that she was like, I was living with my relatives, and I came back for the Yadagorasu case. <laughs> uh, so then she comes back again. Why? Just, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's spring break. No one's like, spring break! Let's go hang out with the prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> well, know if know the prosecutors I mean? were hot like Edgeworth, then I maybe. mean, she, she's got her priorities straight. <laughs> That's not the problem. But how old is Kay again? She's like 16. Six, 16. He's like 22. He's 25, I think, in this. Wait. Five? Okay, yeah. Okay, sorry. You're not gonna get him. Next to the riot shield, there's a canary in a cage. Aw, it's so cute! I wanna be that- I want- <laughs> I want one to be my partner! Partner? Of course! It can be- it can help me open the locks and- It can help me open- It can help me open locks and do other odd jobs at the crime scene! A great thief should always use nature to their advantage! I've heard of canaries being used to detect poison gas. Don't tell me. Ooh, boy. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious-looking nook and oh, cranny. Oh! Oh! Um, check those bug things on the right. 
I've seen those somewhere. It's a collection of colorful personal security alarms. They all seem to have been used before. Yeah, I have one in my room. President. He sure is a nice guy. He bought these security alarms to protect his wife and kids. Then why would he leave them all here? It's obvious that they're for his own personal use. Objection! A single person can't carry that many security alarms. Because a person only has two hands. That objection is worth zero points. That's a heavy looking vest. Oh, I thought that was a phone. No. The person's, the, the president's clothes must be made of some special fabric. Indeed. It's to protect against bullets. Wow, it even does that? Naturally. This is a bulletproof vest, after all. Oh, so it doesn't even matter if they shot him. Unless he got shot in the head. Right. Because it's like uh, Doc Robinson. Oh, there's a bullet. Doc Brown, mark. not Doc Robinson. What am I thinking of? This? Doc McStuffins? <laughs> no, I never watched that show. <laughs> Who's Who has the last name of Robinson? Other than Meet the Robinsons. Wilbur. Wilbur? Wilbur Robinson. Meet the Robinsons. I didn't watch. I've only seen that once. Doc Brown. Doc Brown, Doc Brown, Doc Brown. Back to the Future. Great movie. Ah, so that's what I've seen. Or that's what it is. This is the first time I've seen one. You could have said something earlier. That really surprised me. Check it out. It's a bullet hole. Are these some kind of official documents? I know it's a bit rude, but let's take a peek inside. Okay. Oh, it's like another copy of it. We must be able to repel any attack, attack from the lake. lake. The president's our top, top priority. priority. Undercover, undercover agents to keep an eye on the audience. audience. Oh, maybe Nicole's an undercover agent. Hmm, this seems to be a security plan. Ah, this looks like the one we found earlier in the trash can. Yes, it does. But what's this? Something seems out of place. Yeah, there's two extra people on the bridge. Those people weren't there before, right? Let's compare. Check ours. Yeah, there weren't people on the bridge. And they also didn't have people in the audience. So there's definitely some things that are off. Eureka! What's this? The details of the security plans were changed. Huh? Nah, you're right! Yeah, that's right. It was changed yesterday. President's orders. Why the sudden change? Because two days ago, DeKiller attacked the president. He disguised himself as a bodyguard. Rook was the first to notice. He had already gotten close to the president. Rook managed to stop Whoa. him just in the nick Wait, of time. Look at this epic action shot. This is so cool. So you got DeKiller strangling Knightley, and then, oh, Rook is like about to break his arm. Yeah. And then is. you've got the, the identical twins. <laughs> you got the identical twin dudes. Oh, that explains the neck injury. Yep. Rook grabbed his left arm and twisted it. And then he fired one bullet square into his left arm. What were you doing at that time, Mr. Knightley? Uh, I was... If I remember correctly, the first person I took out that day was you. Oops. Was that a touchy subject? Shut up! So back then... Your neck injury has yet to heal, and you've already forgotten? No, not you! Not now! Since that day, I haven't been able to turn my head right. It sucks! To think that I would suffer an injury. Ethan Rook. You could say he was a most capable individual. Unlike this man here. Ouch! <laughs> What's so different about me and Rook? I believe you're about as different as a pawn and a queen. What?! So you remembered, you remembered Rook's name because he was highly capable. Correct. While disguised as a bodyguard, I happened to hear his name. There was no way I could forget that name. Only a select few have ever been able to injure me. So this was the connection to Killer was talking about. The security arrangements were changed. So that the Killer would not be able to sneak in as a bodyguard again. Only the president's two most trusted subordinates would accompany him on stage. They picked the one that had a neck brace on? He's one of the two that the president trusted, apparently. I don't care. In short, me and Rook. 
Security plans data updated. They should have put them in the audience, at least. No, you want people on stage with the president, just in case. Yeah, but I'm saying you need... If you're gonna change the plans, at least keep some people in the audience. If they thought, oh, he might come in and try and murder the president again, he would be more likely to appear in the audience, I think. Probably, but... I mean, hindsight, you also, you also don't want people running on stage. True. It also appears your positions were changed. That's true! He's now on the right side! Because I can't turn my head to the right! My position got changed to the president's left side. In other words, I was relocated to the right side of the stage. You were relocated to the right side of the stage, but if you're facing, you can't turn your head to the president. No, if he's on the left side of the stage, he can turn his head to the president. Oh wait, hang on. He can't move his head right. Put up that, no, put up no. that photo. Okay, again. you're right. He can't look at the president, but he can look out in the audience. That's why. Okay. Because, yeah, let me, let me look at the photo again in a moment. Oh, this is a bulletproof vest! You were to protect yourself from bullets! There seems to be a bullet stuck in here! Sorry, uh... Because I want to see that again. So he's on, yeah, so he's to the president's left. He can't turn his head right, which means he can't turn to face the president, but he can turn and face all of the audience. Which explains why when Rook was like, bro, I think there's a gunshot, he was looking... Especially since it says pay extra attention to the lake area, which is over this way. So they, yeah. they need Knightley to be able to look to the left in that situation. Okay, that makes more sense, I guess. The... What? You wear it to protect yourself from bullets. <laughs> there's there's a bullet stuck inside. There's that's, a bullet stuck inside. That's a glitch. <laughs> what what was that all of a sudden? <laughs> I always wanted to describe things like you do, and I kind of cut off my sentence. Okay, I don't talk like that. Weird lion lever. A strange decoration based off of some animal is staring at me with its strange eyes. There's a lever on the statue. See right here on its butt. That would be most unforgivable. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. That lever most likely operates the trap door underneath my feet. Hmm, then... That hatch is actually a pitfall trap. I hope you understand. It would be in your best interest to not pull that lever. Oh, really? When a killer talks about your best interests, it would be wise to do as he says. Let's look baka, at... Baka, baka. Oh, there wait, hang go. on. They changed that. Yes, they did. Oh, I can't do now the he looks again. like Wait. <laughs> now he looks like he's doing a fist dance. No, it just... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, by the way, random thing for you, because I forgot to tell you this earlier. I finally saw Star Wars Episode Nine yesterday. Yeah. Great. You loved it? Yes. Nice. It was really good. They... They went very weird with the plot points. Yes, though. they did. But I was like... <sighs> Huh? Please don't spoil it for I'm the audience I'm not gonna spoil members. it yeah. for anybody. We can talk more after. Yeah, let's talk more after, because I'm, like, very interested. In I, I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious-looking nook and crack. That is the weirdest bullet hole thing. Shot, shot under the shoulder. Shot he was doing his leg lifts, and then someone shot him in the arm. His pets look know. awesome. <laughs> the victim is Ethan Rook. He was the president's bodyguard. He has very nice pants. Uh, after, hear after hearing the gunshots, he immediately evacuated the president into the plane. He gave up his life to fulfill his duties. Does this mean he'll receive a post-humanus? Humorous? humorous? Post-humus? It's supposed to be post-humorous. Does, does this mean he'll receive a post-humorous promotion? Okay, there's no need to f for forced comments. How did you know? Bodyguards don't follow that promotion system. The bullet pierced into his body, just below the armpit. Where did he go now? Unfortunately, he was hit in an area his bulletproof vest didn't cover. Here's the thing. That means the killer... No, wait. The killer didn't have a gun, right? No. Er, yes. Maybe? <laughs> we found did... the gun in the trash. Okay, because it's on the left side. If mm, Rook was on the left... You'd have to be in a position where you could, like, hit him. Shoo! Rook was on the left, but it was stage right. Yeah, it's stage right, yeah. It really is... It really seems like a well-aimed shot. The cause of death was most likely blood loss. The bleeding has stopped. Crime scene notes jotted down in the organizer. He's also been dead for a while. 
The paramedics were called to treat Mr. Rook, right? All I can think of is how can they be? They're dead. <laughs> or I'm afraid they didn't make it in time. He has a gun. It seems the victim also carried a gun. Did he try to shoot something? He may have drawn it out instinctively to return fire. We need to check to see if the gun has fired any bullets. Hmm? It's still fully loaded. There's no evidence of any shots being fired. This gun is also from Zane Fall, right? Ah, uh, yeah. We were always issued the same model revolver. Is it the same? This is a bulletproof attache case. It's a tool bodyguards use to protect themselves from bullets. It can be seen in Kay's photo. You were asking about these earlier, so those are bulletproof shields, basically. He was holding it in his left arm! How did he get anything? It's very Hit. true. Seems unless Rook... if, unless if, like, the president was like, and then just shot him. <laughs> the president's just like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, Knightley see, did. Knightley's looking to the left. He can't mm -hmm. look to the right. Seems Rook and Knightley like both had so one. He looks like it is so much pain, too. He's like, oh, man, really smart. <laughs> I don't Bullet know why, but I look at him and I keep thinking of Jit the Hawk. Jit the Hawk. <laughs> I love Jit the Hawk. <laughs> Jet. <laughs> Bulletproof attache case data jotted down. Oh, Jet, you're so bad. Ah, that's the scene I stole on film! You didn't do anything illegal in taking this. Anywhere, anytime. I'm always in the mood to steal. You haven't stolen, like, anything in the entire game. It's like, seriously. You just wanted to use the word steal, didn't you? <laughs> Have I been caught? Yeah, so he shouldn't have been able to have been shot there. So I think we've examined all of that. That's easy. Yeah. I, already checked I think it's theory. logic time. It's logic time, and it's, uh, let's look at that bulletproof thing. Yeah, I, we know what to do. Also, the thing on the side looks like he has a yoga mat. <laughs> a yoga in, mat? In here. Oh, that's the life vest. Assassin okay, assassination attempt. It was likely a premeditated crime. Found in the trash can audience area. Gun that is prohibited uh -huh, in this country. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, Bullet uh -huh, pierced through the victim's right, body. Where'd it go? Gun. Rook's gun. It's different! See? It doesn't have as many things. See? These two guns, they're the exact same model. These guns came from Zane Fa. Assassin's revolver data updated in the organizer. The only difference is that this one has a laser pointer attached, uh, which can easily be removed. But hey, it gave us something. Looks like all the bodyguards were provided with guns from Zane Fa. Indeed. Are those guns rare? No, not particularly. They're not easy to obtain domestically, but it isn't impossible either. What? I thought they might be a treasure. Yes, it's unfortunate. Ah! Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, are you talking about treasure? Not quite. If it was a rare model, it would have been easier to identify. Even evidence can become treasure. I see. Even during your investigations, you search for treasure. Well, I didn't quite say that. Okay, let's investigate. Where's the treasure? And suddenly, she's motivated. Well, Bruce Frew, Knightley's position. He couldn't turn his head right. Plans were altered so that he would be on the right side. Bulletproof vest found on top of the desk. Bullet is embedded in it. Was this the president's? Jesus. Where did the bullet go? Well, maybe it hit the bulletproof vest afterwards. Two bullets were fired. We know that from the number of gunshots. One hit the Steel Samurai balloon, and the other took Rook's life. But didn't the bullet also hit the President's bulletproof vest? Right. It doesn't match up with the number of shots. However, there is one way to solve this. One way? The bullet that stole Rook's life pierced through his body and then hit the vest. In other words, Rook and the President were hit by the same bullet. I see. That's right. It'd be dangerous if he hadn't worn that bulletproof vest. Is the president all right? Even while wearing a bulletproof vest, you can still get injured. Yeah, the bullet's impact can still fracture your bones. But don't worry, he's fine. The president's trained himself like no other. Yeah, You've, seen You've seen his six-pack. You've seen his six-pack. I mean, would that bulletproof vest even fit him? 
Like, we saw, like, pull up that photo of him. I don't think we have the photo of him actually like that, but, like... <laughs> like, look at the... You can see the muscle definition through his shirt. I work out at the gym every if day. If he was wearing the bulletproof vest, it would be the one that, like, wouldn't even come up to, like, his, um, pecs. <laughs> yeah. It would just, like, come up to here. So The president's not... whole body is a bulletproof vest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Gord Lake today! <laughs> I love that photo. Maybe the president didn't even need a bulletproof. <laughs> Maybe he didn't even need a bullet pro Bowser in Mario Power Tennis. <laughs> I think that might be pushing it. Everyone, Everyone needs, needs pro, pro Bowser. Bowser. <laughs> I'd like to examine the bullet. There's a chance there may still be ballistic markings. Ballistic markings? What's that? Ballistic markings are always left on a bullet. Each gun leaves a different marking. Man, if I ever am uh, caught at a crime scene, not that I'll be caught, but like <laughs> if I'm ever a witness, I'll be like, yo, ballistic markings. If we examine the ballistic markings, we'll know which gun the bullet was fired from. You could say that they're like a gun's fingerprints. I get it now. Let's investigate right away. I think that'd be difficult. The bullet was completely flattened when it hit the bulletproof vest. There's no way you could investigate the ballistic markings. What? I wanted to investigate them. <laughs> it's like a Great Mouse Detective where Basil of Baker Street looks at the ballistic markings and they perfectly match up until the end and then they, like, they're different. He's like, no! <laughs> I don't remember that. You probably didn't know it was ballistic markings. No, I don't think doing. I did. I watched that when I was like 11. That's a great movie. Like that. That's a good movie. Now then, I've grown weary of this investigation. Wait, but we still haven't matched up the other thing. Still no sign of Detective Gumshoe. They didn't match up. Oh. Mr. Prosecutor, have you uncovered the truth yet? No. Not yet. See, look, there's a, mo a yoga mat on the, the door. <sighs> Looks like a... A oh, yoga mat and That's a, a life vest and a spatula used for making cookie dough batter. Oh, okay. I see. In that case, would you like to speak with someone who is involved in the incident? Someone involved in the incident? You mean... Is there no, not one more witness? Just behind those doors? Of course, the president himself. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, please do the honors and summon the witness here. Can I do his There's no chance in hell I'm letting that happen. You think you can just summon the president like a witness in court? Ha! Can we go beyond the door? Mr. President, I'm sure you are watching all this through your security cameras. Would you kindly grace us with your presence? That is, if you value your bodyguard's life. He just walks out the door. No one comes. I see. Mr. President, what sort of a man leaves another to die on his behalf? M Mr. President! S stop it! Take it easy! Hey! Still nothing! Come on, Detective Gumshoe! Uh-oh. Ah! What? The lights! My apologies, Mr. Prosecutor, but I wouldn't try anything if I were you. It seems I am un unable to reach the President. Even with Mr. Knightley's life. S stop! Ugh! Ah! Kay! The killer, you! However, I have already seen the truth. Where? Where is he? Ugh! I leave the rest in your hands. This is so epic! Mr. Prosecutor. I love that photo. That's that a image. good photo. Edge. Oh. Mr. Edgeworth! D Detective Gumshoe. Mr. Edgeworth! Sir! Everybody. Oh, they left everybody else fine. Yeah, the, the killer didn't kill anybody. The killer Kinda. didn't kill anybody, but. <laughs> the, the, Mr. But he punched Edgeworth. us in the face, and we're gonna have to continue that next time on Ace Attorney Investigations me? 2. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. We're at the 40 minute mark. Okay, fine. Thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in next time. We'll see what happens. Uh, after Edgeworth might be dead. I don't Game think, over. I don't, then it becomes D Gumshoe Investigations. No, it becomes K. It wouldn't become Farday. K Farday Investigations. She ain't never find, Everyone finds out Edgeworth's dead, and Francisca's like, stupid brother. <laughs> Francisca Valcarman <laughs> is <laughs> <Attorney> Investigations. <Yeah. laughs>
<laughs> Any, a, yeah. You would love that, wouldn't you? I would you? love that. Anyhow, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. Thank <laughs> you.